So here's the game. So we have 15 objects. Um, think you can think of them as plankton if you want. Uh, and th we have two uh, axes uh, features. Let's think of it as uh, area and aspect ratio. We know those pretty well. And we want to cluster these. The only thing required for k-means clustering is you have to tell it ahead of time how many clusters you want. Now, how many clusters, how do you know how many clusters? Well, two ways. One is you can look at the data and you can estimate uh, how many clusters you want. Um, and at the end, I'll show you a way that you can mathematically uh, see how many clusters would, would be best. But I'm going to eyeball this and uh, how many clusters, any, any votes for uh, any ideas of how many clusters you want to try here? How many clusters does your eye and brain say? Three. Three, good. Three. So, okay. So here's how this method works. So we know we, we want three clusters. So we're just randomly going to put three points, three cluster points on this plot. And when I say random, uh, I mean random. So I'm going to drop these three points. So I have three points in the, cluster, in the feature space. And I'm going to use those to define three clusters. And here's how it works. What you do for every point, you measure the distance between your object and each of these three cluster points. And you pick the one that's closest. So it, let's say this object here is obviously closest to the red. So it becomes a member of the red group, the red cluster. And you can see probably all these three are going to be red. This guy I had to measure with my ruler, but it's a, it will be red too, okay? So let's start with the first one. And you can mathematically do this. Uh, you can measure distance using um, Pythagorean theorem. And this works for any dimensions. Uh, it's the square root of uh, the x, plus y, x squared plus y squared, the square, square root of that. If it's three dimensions, it would be the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared, and so forth. So you basically, for every object, calculate the distance to the three centroid points, and you become a member, the one that's closest to you, okay? So if you fill this out, boom. Does this make sense? I went through every, every object, and I figured out which one was closest to it, and I assigned it to uh, that group. And I, again, used my ruler uh, for these two. The, this, these, this object is closer to the blue than the green, and same with that guy. Okay, everyone with me so far? That was the, um, uh, we're almost done with what's called the first iteration. Okay, so what did we do? So we found out what, we randomly put three points, three cluster points on our feature space, and we found out for each object what cluster uh, point you closest to and assigned it to that cluster. Now we take each cluster group, the red group, the blue group, and the green, and we figure out the centroid. That's the, um, the average location of all the members of the group. Uh, you could think of it as like the center of mass. So for the red group, it'll be somewhere here. The blue group is interesting because, yeah, they're mostly clustered here, but you got some here. So the mean, the mean point uh, called the centroid will be about here, and the green will be somewhere in here, and voila. Okay, I just moved the uh, the cluster point to the center of the clusters. Okay, we finished what's called the first iteration. Uh, find the ones, put them in the group that they're closest to, calculate the new centroid, and move the point to that centroid. That's one iteration, iteration. And the fact that I said iteration might give you a hint that we're going to do it again, OK? OK, so we do the algorithm again. So for each, each object, we find out what centroid are they closest to. And this object uh, is closest to the red. Matter of fact, it looks like all four are closest to the red. Um, these guys are closest to the blue. What's interesting, what about this guy? What is he closest to? Green. Green, green I like that in stereo. Thank you, guys. Yes, that one's closest to green. And what about this one? Also the green. Thank green. you, Madhu. Yep, exactly. So 
they get reassigned. And now the last part of this iteration is we, mo we calculate the new centroids for these new groups. Um, this one didn't change, right? Same group member, same centroid. This one now, uh, the centroid's going to be somewhere in here because it's uh, these five are in the blue group now. So this point's going to move somewhere in here. And the red one now, this guy's, uh, uh, we lost the two out here. So this probably will move a little here. And let's move to the next frame. And sure enough, the red didn't change. The blue centroid moved and the green centroid moved. We've now done two iterations. And now we can repeat this. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to now go through every object and see which cluster is cl which cluster you belong to. And it turns out if you go through all the distances, this is the closest distances you can get. So no matter now, no matter how many iterations you go beyond this, you'll still have the same locations because this is as best as we can do. Okay, and it only took three iterations. Depending on where that random point starts, it might take more or less. If we point, if, if it started with these points here, it would be done in one iteration. If they're all in the corner, it would take more iteration. 